Yellow, and welcome back to Let's Go. And today we're going to be talking about the rear suspension for the 9Bot Max. Let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about the rear suspension for the 9Bot Max. And the questions we're going to be asking really is, should you buy it? And the honest answer is, should you buy any of these suspensions? Uh, for the 9Bot, I would say yes, the front suspension definitely helps and the rear suspension does help as well. However, this is the cheap suspension, so don't expect great things from it. Typically, this will go for around $50. I don't know if that's including shipping without shipping. You're going to have to check the links below, which I will pop there. Everything that I do, I will pop in the links below so you can check it out for yourself. Firstly, let's go on to styling. In my honest opinion, the styling on this is absolutely terrible, <laughs> considering that you've got the, the uh, monorim variant out there. The monorim one actually does look pretty good, apart from the split fender on there. Why would they split the fender? Because you're still going to get water spraying. It. Yeah, it baffles me. They're going for that space age look. That brings me on to a point about water. With the fender on here, as you can see here, it is getting a little bit of spray and that will go up your back as well. Uh, it kind of needs to come down. They could have extended it a little bit more and they could have even integrated the light better into the fender as well. So I'm not too keen on the light design, but I didn't buy this for the looks. I bought this for practicality. I bought it so that I have suspension to go along with the front. I wanted something that I can go off road with. I'm gonna get dirty, it doesn't matter. But if you wanna stay dry, probably stick with the stock fender for the time being until there is a little bit of a better one out there. When it comes to water protection, as I said, you're not going to get much uh, from, from the rear there. But also, there is an issue with certain bolts on here rusting as well. So, the four bolts here, these are not structural bolts, but they are uh, considered cosmetic flaws. And the quality of the screws and bolts on here are not the best. But it's $50, you can't really, or sub $50, you can't really complain too much about that. Uh, here in England, we get a lot of salt on the roads when it goes below five degrees, I believe. They send out the gritting lorries, so you end up having to clean it off, otherwise you're going to get salt anyway. Or rusting in there anyway. Uh, as you can see, you've got a build up around here. And... The underneath there, there's actually bolts. I will insert some photos from uh, one of the guys that have bought this recently and sent me a couple of photos over. And uh, <laughs> you should see his backpack as well. That was absolutely caked in mud. It happened with me on many occasions, but I, I don't care about that thing because I go out, I enjoy it. I'm not going anywhere to like work or anything. I come home, I can change. You guys might want to take that into consideration. The quality of the parts in terms, it, it's, it's essentially just pressed metal or form, you know, cut metal, stamped. Um, the, basically on, on high-end suspension units, you would have bearings where there's any sort of pivoting, just for that smoother flow. On here, they've got more of a, it's more of a shaft. So on this one, it's a long shaft. You can see the video of me changing over for this yellow spring, which is actually from the, this is the hard spring from the shark set suspension. It's actually a little bit better than the stock spring that comes with it, but I mainly put it on there for aesthetics. The medium one that came with the shark set is just too soft. You need a bit of firmness on the rear. When it comes to the side bits here, so when you're taking the, uh, the nuts and bolts off, you actually have to take off the lawyer tabs which are those little tabs, basically washers with a, a little tab on it that holds in there. They're on there obviously for safety reasons, but some scooters don't come with them. It doesn't come with the front part of this. And for instance, on the wide wheel, they don't come with them either. Uh, I think so on the front anyway. 
and some people might want to consider that as a safety aspect and yeah that, that you basically just got the bolt on up on there so I, I probably lock tight that in well i think it's lock tighted anyway but add a bit more just in case but those bolts there that come with the kit are like little barrel so it's like a screw that goes with inside a barrel and then the pivot is around that barrel it's the same with these this is a long barrel here so these bits here they actually are held on with really tiny screws and the screws basically just go into the metal there's no nothing actually physically there there's no screw hole there so you actually kind of have to glue them in so what i did was i glued them in with uh loctite just so it's not strong glue and then i can just pull them out again to get to the bolts these aren't held on other than you glue in the screws that come with it in there so just be aware of that as well so I forgot to add a little bit in here about the dimensions. So you are going to get a slightly longer wheelbase and the typical fender would usually start around here and then go over. So you're going to get an extra uh, around two inches of foot clearance uh, for the deck. So you can pop your foot further back. Also down here, there is... Uh, da -da -da -da. So typically the bolt is around here, you're gonna get an extra, so the scooter's gonna be an extra four inches longer. But let's let's look on the positive side. You do have now rear suspension that's affordable for the rear. The monorim, even though it does look good, it's expensive. And it's really expensive for what it is. Like, yeah, and you have to then modify your scooter. But yeah, that's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna drill, permanently drill my scooter to have the monorim one on there. If they had not done that, I'd have probably paid a little bit more for it. I, who, who knows? But yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna pay for someone that I have to permanently adjust my scooter and if I want to put it back to normal later, I can't do that. With this kit, I can do that. If I don't like it, it comes off, normal kit back on, and then, you know, I could send it back or sell it on, or it could just be part of my showpiece, as you can see here. So as for the, um, this part, so this is actually, there's nothing bolted to your scooter here, in here. So when you get down into here, you've actually got just a bit that's resting against the scooter chassis. And that's basically what holds the tension here. So that compresses, all the force goes into that bit there. Also, all the wires for the cables. So we've got the brake cable that comes straight down here. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Out of here. And then you have to then somehow tidy them up around there i've put a little bit of tape just to keep things secure and then basically cable tie them there so it's not the prettiest wiring it's not the best wiring but you know it it doesn't get affected really these wires are designed to take moisture and dirt just make sure you keep them secure away from the spring itself whilst it's compressing because it might squeeze them and break them or cause permanent damage anyway. But yeah, you've got the cable that from the brake light that comes down under here, and that's good, that's filthy, you know. It, they could have come up with a better system here, and it wouldn't have cost much more at all, but they didn't. So, as I say, it, it's a cheap, cheap suspension. The mounting points, so I've actually left this uncovered. I could glue it down if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna leave it open so that I can change it out whenever I want to. Maybe get a new mat, maybe grip tape it at some point. What do you think? And you can see here that there is rust happening around here. So you've got to keep an eye on it. A little bit of rust in, not really around there, but along, along there. 
So do make sure to keep an eye out for any rusting. If you live in an area where it's raining constantly and you take your scooter out constantly, they grit the roads quite a lot. Maybe before you put it on there, do some weather treatment to it. That's the best thing. But I don't do any of that because I want to see what happens over a, over a period of time. The gentleman that sent me the photos, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I forgot your name. Um, actually sent me his photos after having it on for only five days. And it's, you know, everything's rusted out. The bolts are rusted. So just be careful there. The, the main structural bolts here and here, here and here. They are fine, here is fine. But as I can see, I've, I've changed the spring. There's a little bit of chip in there, so I don't, hopefully that that doesn't cause any long-term problems. Other than that, you know, I, I actually quite like it for the purpose that it was made for. I'm not gonna worry about getting wet too much because as I say, I'll come home, I'll get changed. I'll clean it off with the hose. Don't tell hardcore people that I do that. I, I do wash it off with a hose. And uh, yeah, just if you're gonna do that, be very careful. And it's it's caused me no issues. Like I love it for, for the purpose that I do. I go off road and I also jump curbs and things. So we've got potholes. It does its job for me. So I just wanna make a point that if you want this suspension, it is a viable alternative. You just have to put up with the, 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 the negatives. So, you know, you've got the, the the water splash, the looks of it. It's not amazingly comfortable, but there are limitations to the nine bar. It wasn't designed with suspension in mind. The, the, the tires, the pneumatic tires were meant to be the suspension. But if you want to purchase this, go ahead, you know, it's not done me any harm. There are a couple of people out there that are not liking it. I don't like the looks of it, you know. But it's it does its job. And that's what we ask of it. It does its job. It takes a lot of that pressure off your rear, off your legs. And when you're riding a scooter, typically you're gonna be out when it's dry and especially in the summer months. So there's, there's your pros and cons. I was gonna script this, but then I thought I might as well give it to you from my point of view, my you know, my experience and, and let you know. And w this is what I wanna do. I'm gonna give you honest, uh, honest reviews, honest feedback, and hopefully that will aid in your decision to buy whatever you wanna buy. The links are there, the information's there. It's up to you what you want to do with that and I hope that you have a fantastic time making your decision. I'll leave a link in the description below for this suspension. Also, for if you wanna get your hands on the front suspension, there's a separate link from that. Do not buy the front suspension from the link that I sent for the, for the rear one, because it's the different, the other kind. Also, if you want to get hold of a shark set suspension, you can go, you, you can follow the link there as well. Use my personal coupon code. And if you want to support the channel in general, there are links down there. I've, got, I've also got Patreon as well, which uh, if you do want to help support me, that you, you don't have to. It's at $5 a month uh, for the basic one. And it's just to help me keep the channel running essentially. And uh, hopefully you enjoy my content and do want to see more in the future. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me even more than anything and subscribe because the more people that can get my content, the more people that can fix their own scooters and also not have to worry about purchasing something before they've got to see me do it. So thank you very much guys. We'll see you in the next one.